Hello, people. Well, so today we're gonna be trying this weird dinner. Hey, I'm gonna cook from this cookbook for my family for an entire week. Stick around to see what we think. Mmm. It's so gooey inside. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> this could be a disaster. Like you don't like it at all? Uh-uh. This might be my new favorite curry. Look how squishy that is. Mmm. We need to save some for dinner. Mm -mm. That might have been one of my favorite meals I've made in reviewing these cookbooks. Greetings everyone, my name is Jeremy and here on the channel we focus on plant-based, vegan, food related type things, health stuff. I have some videos where I talk about general health things around plant-based and veganism. I interview people from time to time about their, their weight loss stories and their transition into being plant-based. But the other thing I do on here that people seem to really like is I take cookbooks that either I have collecting dust in my shelf or that you recommend and I force my family to eat from them for an entire week and we let you know what we think of it. This week we have Everyday Cooking by the Six Vegan Sisters. 200 delicious recipes for plant-based cookbooks. What? For plant-based comfort food. That makes more sense. So this is a book that was recommended to me by people who watch the channel. And I'm gonna be honest, at first glance, I wasn't crazy super impressed by this book, mostly because there's a lot of recipes in here that are basically take this thing and add a spice to it and now it's a new thing. Which I guess is what cooking is, that's fine. But there's like a cream cheese recipe in here that basically says buy vegan cream cheese and add shit to it. They, it's not actual shit, they're not recommending you poop into your food. Just for the record. So I'm avoiding stuff like that and trying to find things in here that don't use recipes that I would normally use. The good news is I think my family's gonna like a fair amount of this stuff because it's all pretty comfort food based, which is what we kind of focus on in our own house as well. So I think that'll be uh, welcome. And hopefully I find some new stuff in here that's different from other meals that we've got that can become regular staples. If you got a cookbook you'd like me to cook from, let me know in the comments below and I will get to it. Preferably a vegan or plant-based cookbook, but you know what, I am up for a challenge and I will convert recipes for you as well if you'd like to see me try that. If at any point throughout this video you're enjoying it, hit that like button and you know, subscribe if you want to have more content like this. On to the food! So I'm gonna make these no-bake chocolate peanut butter bars. So I just noticed it calls for creamy no-stir peanut butter, which I think means like <laughs> skippy, like this stuff that has sugar added to it, which I'm not gonna use. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't affect the texture here. Holy, how many sisters are there? Six? Six vegan sisters. Are they actual sisters or are they like friends who are like, we're sisters? They all have different last names, but that doesn't mean anything. No, six of them. And they all went vegan, that's interesting. And they all cook with a lot of processed foods. We're gonna fix it and show you how we do it. No offense, Molly, Emily, Carrie, Mary, Kate, Hannah, and Shannon, but uh, you used a lot of processed crap in your recipes, and we gotta fix that, at least in the stuff we make. And these actually look pretty good. The sugar amount's not so bad. No oil. Good job, vegan sisters. So yeah, let's give this a roll and see how it goes. No bake, freeze it. This should be fun. So this is simple enough. It's just mixing all this stuff together and then adding some oat flour and creating like a bit of a base. And then it's just making like a little bit of a ganache, which is just melted chocolate chips. If I can reach them. Hello, chocolate chips. These are the best chocolate chips in the world. Oh, you need some of these? These are from Costco. Not the jar, but they're they're a dairy-free chocolate chip. Put it in my mouth. You know when they're even better? What? After they've been baked. They're gonna, creamier. I'm gonna melt them. I'm gonna make a ganache. Mm. So we're gonna melt these with peanut butter and put it on top of that thing. <laughs> the thing. The what do we call it? The peanut butter layer. Then we're gonna put it in the freezer and firm up and come into bars later. I, this is gonna be no brainer, this is gonna taste great. It's peanut butter and chocolate. Mmm. Yep. Peanut buttery, chocolatey. All the things you want in a peanut butter chocolate bar. Mmm. 
Oh, I like the texture. Tastes like a peanut butter cup. Yeah? I like. It's creamy, it's simple, it's really good. Yeah, you don't need that sugary peanut butter for this. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. So it's Mother's Day here, and I'm gonna make this hot fudge pudding cake for dessert. This looks really fun. I'm pretty much gonna make it as is. I'm gonna use gluten free flour, so we'll see how that turns out. And for the second layer, it calls for a cup of light brown sugar. Not gonna do that. Probably gonna cut that in half and use coconut sugar. Otherwise, instead of granulated sugar, I'll probably use coconut sugar. And when you realize you put it into way too small a bowl, transfer it over to a bigger bowl. So then you have room for mixing. Oh, and it calls for a quarter cup of coconut oil. So that will either become aquafaba or applesauce. This should be fun. It, it's bonkers. It's so like you put all the dry ingredients together and then you add the wet, but there's a second layer where you just sprinkle some stuff on top and then you add boiling water to the very top and you cook it. I mean, it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, but <laughs> this could be a disaster. I'm really excited to try this. Here comes the part that doesn't make any sense. All right, I'm, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by this. Don't mind the basketball in the background. I was just testing it, Mom! All right, so we're gonna add some ice cream to this and serve it up. I'm trying it. It's good. I'm really like, good, hang on, I'm going to brownie. Tastes like a brownie? Mm -hmm. Woo! Really good yeah. Mm -hmm. Some chocolate, ooh. It's like a cookie I got from Subway once. Cause it's kind of a weird consistency. It's supposed to have a weird consistency. No, but it's like it's like not melty, but it's like kind of like jello-y. Oh my goodness, you've never had molten guava cake. Um, I like pudding cotton. It's like a pudding, but better than pudding. So we're gonna make some bran muffins. I don't know what it is about bran muffins, but it's something that I just remember from my childhood loving and it's not something I have on a regular basis and so I wanted to make some. They basically want you to make a buttermilk. So all you have to do to do that is take a non-dairy milk and add apple cider vinegar to it. And then you take bran cereal, grind it up and add some boiling water to it and let it kind of sit inside of it. Biggest difference here is I'm not gonna make them gluten-free because my wife can't have the bran anyway but I'm not gonna use the all-purpose flour. I'm gonna swap that out with whole wheat and I knock back the sugar a little bit. She calls for three quarters a cup, so I'm gonna knock that back to half. Uh, and then the oil. So similar, I'm not gonna use the canola oil because it's a muffin, I'll probably use applesauce. I'm gonna add raisins to this because who the hell wants a brand muffin without raisins in it? Oh, right, there's people who like are weird about raisins. Let me know below if you're one of those people that don't like raisins and like pecans. Not pecans, like um, ah, butter tarts and whatnot. Also, people don't like pecans and butter tarts. Let me know if you're one of those people that has a whole real thing about raisins and, and we're gonna get into it. With love, with love. These muffins look awesome. So I have to run to a meeting at my kid's school. So I'm gonna leave a plate of them for my kids and their friends for after school. And I'm gonna ask them to make a video saying what they like or not. Let's see if they actually do it. Good job. Tastes like a muffin. Yeah, Bye. This is really good. It's missing something. I think it's almost missing like, it's almost not bran enough. It's like the flour ratio is off. It's too much regular flour to bran flour. I think I'd want to up the bran flour to make it a really branny muffin because it almost doesn't feel like dense enough or something. It's kind of like a bran muffin light. So I really like this, especially adding the raisins. I think it can be even better. Look how squishy that is. Don't tell me you need oil 
in a recipe. That's just from applesauce. And it's so squishy and delicious and moist and fluffy. So for that half a cup of oil, that would have added like another 85 calories to each muffin. You don't miss a damn thing. So now we're gonna make a creamy tomato soup. So part of this is making a cashew cream. So last night I soaked about a half a cup of cashews. So last night I soaked the cashews in water and have let them just get all soft and stuff. That's a technical term. This just allows them to, to blend a lot smoother. So we're gonna turn this into a, a cashew cream. Now if you didn't have this, or if you wanted to make it nut free, you could probably just get away with a can of coconut milk. So we're gonna make this creamy tomato soup. This recipe looks pretty straightforward. I gotta chop up an onion, some garlic, and then it's tomatoes, that cashew cream I'm gonna make, broth, and some spices and stuff. This is a pretty simple recipe, and I'm hoping I love it, because that's just what I want a simple, creamy, homemade tomato soup that I can make super simple. And uh, yeah, I gotta make this quick because I have to go pick up my wife today. So let's see if uh, making the video for it fucks me up. Here we go. Ooh, yeah. There's something about that that's a little strange. Is it the basil? The onion? Maybe it's the onion powder, I don't know. I like it. Maybe I watered it down too much. I tried making like a batch and a half because my son has some friends coming over and they're teenagers and they just eat and eat and eat and eat and wanted to make sure there was enough for everyone. I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, it's not blowing my mind. Let's see what the others think about this. It's good. I like it. They like tomatoes. You guys want to be in the video? Sure. Do you like the soup? Hey, yes. I like the cheese. <laughs> not not part of my meal. But... <laughs> this soup is very good. Soup's good? Yeah, it's fine. It's like tomato. Yeah, you don't like tomato. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make these double chocolate chip muffins, or just double chocolate muffins, apparently. And I'm gonna try to make these school safe. How long can I run that out? Safe. Um, so what am I gonna do to healthify these? First of all, I'm gonna make them gluten free. So I'm gonna use oat flour here, I think, because I'm running low on my wife's gluten free blend that she made. The sugar's not bad, it's three quarters of a cup. I'm gonna knock that down to half a cup. It calls for a half a cup of canola oil and then either vegan yogurt or sour cream or a mashed banana. So, uh, applesauce is gonna replace that canola oil and I'm gonna use a banana. A cup and a third of chocolate chips. No one in my house is gonna complain if I add that much chocolate chip. And I might do it, just to really pack the fuck out of these things. They're gonna love them. Maybe I will do that. Maybe we'll call this a dessert. I have a hard time calling something this treaty a muffin. It's more like a, it's a healthier cupcake-ish. Ish. Hot tip, always save a couple of your mix-ins for the top. Cause nobody wants that muffin where you don't see any chocolate chips on top. So the trick is just keep a couple on the side and put them on top of all of them at the end so they all look awesome. How is it? Mmm. Mmm. It's so gooey inside. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's really good. There's I was not expecting that. that. There's avocado in it? No. no. It tastes like avocado. How is that possible? Oh it's not dense at all. I'm uh, magic. I don't know how you did that. Apparently, I, I made a little mini miracle. Oh, wow. I can see why they went crazy for this. Holy shit, that's good. Whoa! I mean, is it a muffin? It's a cupcake, let's, let's come on. Six Vegan Sisters, love your book so far, big fan. This is not a, a muffin, it's a cupcake. Chocolate, it's amazing. 
If you put icing on it, it's a cupcake. Is that the difference for you? Yeah. So for dinner tonight, I'm gonna make two recipes from this book that are gonna go together. Buttered tofu and turmeric rice. And now you're asking, how are you gonna modify these so it's not actually the recipe that's in the book? To be fair, I'm just healthifying these things, making them so me and my family will enjoy them. That said, you know what I'm gonna do because it is butter tofu? I'm gonna use the butter here. I'm not gonna swap it out with something else. I'm actually gonna use butter, vegan butter, a quarter cup of it, even though it adds a shit ton of calories. It's also hopefully gonna add a shit ton of flavor. So that's a case where I will do it because it adds to the flavor flav. Otherwise, this looks good. I'm gonna make this as is. I'm not gonna change out a damn thing. Yeah, I'm gonna make this exactly as the recipe calls for it. And then for the turmeric rice, the only difference is I'm not gonna use basmati, I'm gonna use long grain uh, brown rice. Probably not gonna use the butter. And I'm gonna do it in the instant pot, so I'm not gonna use the same amount of vegetable broth they're asking for here, just because the instant pot calls for a different ratio. Otherwise, I'm gonna make that basically as is as well. And both of these look nice and quick. In theory, I should be able to make this in half an hour. And I'm gonna add some peas to the side. All I'm gonna do is take some frozen peas and add some boiling water to them. And what that does nicely is the, the boiling water unfreezes the peas without cooking them too much. So they just kind of like have this perfect, you know, quality to them where they're not overcooked or anything. So I'm gonna do that as opposed to steaming them. All right. And then I might just mix that in with the butter tofu as opposed to having them on the side and make that a game day decision. Let's go. I decided to add the peas in. So it makes it like a, what's it called with the peas? It's like a sag, not a sag, that's spinach. Uh, I don't know, someone in, in the comments below, correct me. It's, it's late and I'm tired. I'll throw these in. And then the kids are almost home from dinner. I think it's gonna be good. Give that sauce a little whirly whirl. Yes. Oh, it's so good. I mean, the butter. It's a treat. It's not something I would normally do. It's a treat, and I, it's going to be good. My kids had a long day. They're coming home late, so it's like a late dinner for us, so they deserve something special. What are your favorite vegan Indian dishes? Let me know in the comments below, because we love Indian food in this house. I've even got some videos on the channel that show... Oh no, they're coming up. They're gonna be coming up to show how to make naan and and another kind of like a butter chickpea kind of thing that I do. But uh, this is really good. The butter chickpea that I do, instead of butter, I use almond butter. And it gives it a really rich flavor. Holy shit. It's like a subtle, but such a nice, beautiful flavor. Oh, wow. I gotta say, I do this with Mexican dishes sometimes. I'll make like a taco spice and cook the rice with it. It's a small little step you could do, but just flavoring your rice while you cook it just adds so much more to your meal. If you're making an Italian dish, you could use Italian seasoning or just like your own little mix with like basil and marjoram and oregano and stuff. I almost said shit. Don't put shit in your rice. It never tastes good. Ever. Hello, people. So today we're gonna be trying this weird dinner. Ow! <laughs> How's the flavor, though? <laughs> Did you get that on camera? Yeah. <gasps> Ow! <laughs> what? Stop doing it! Why do you keep going back if it's burning your mouth? Because I want it. It's really good. <laughs> It tastes like curry. I could eat this often. Yummy! You could eat it often? Mm -hmm. Yummy. This might be my new favorite curry. This is really good. So far this book has been like a winner. 
It's good stuff. I've been doing some mild substitutions, but really nice. And the rice is good. It's a turmeric rice. Mm. Go to pbwithday.ca to find out more. Oh, my shirt. Wait, I thought you were trying to undress me. What are you doing? <laughs> Very good. Yeah. What is this, Ali Gobi? It's called butter tofu. Oh, so it's like butter. a butter chicken version. But the rice is a turmeric rice, so I flavored the rice when I cooked it too. Shake my hand. So for tonight dinner, <laughs> what did I just say? So tonight for dinner, I'm gonna make a creamy, spicy pasta. Uh, I'm a little worried it's gonna be too spicy for my family, although my kids are getting older. They like things with a bit of a kick. So let's just see how this kicks them in the butt. What am I changing? Four tablespoons of olive oil. That's 400 calories that I don't wanna put in this meal. So I'm gonna try to get away with zero of that. So the other thing we're adding to this is we're also making a quote unquote Parmesan crusted tofu. Uh, obviously no oil. I use gluten-free bread for the breadcrumbs. So this isn't great. Well, I'm trying to make bread anyway. It'll be- Bread? Well, no, bread like, like a Parmesan crusty. Oh, I thought you said I couldn't make bread. Yeah, that's fine. We're gonna, we're gonna make this work. This, this is gonna be, it's gonna be some extra little pieces. It's like a little, it's like a little gift, a little bonus gift to some people. Um, right? Okay, bye now. Bye. And then it asks for a vegan mayo mixture to make it like, like the creamy layer inside of the breading. I don't have any vegan mayo. I'm gonna try to do something with chia seeds and plant milk. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it out. I don't think this is gonna work, but let's see. Worst case, I'll just do it in some milk. I don't think this works. I think I've screwed up on multiple levels here. Not just the, that, but also just the breading in general. It's not as crumbly good a mixture as it should be. Okay. Yeah, that's unfortunately a waste. I think I've done a crap job here with like a freshly toasted piece of bread to use. So. So the pass is pretty simple. You basically make this sauce inside the pan. You know what I'm gonna add to this? I'm gonna cut up some broccoli and cook that with the pasta and throw it all in together because there's no vegetables in here. Shame on you, six vegan sisters. Add vegetables to your meals. Just throw in some greens, man. For the health of it. It still makes it comfort food. Just healthify it a little bit. I'm desperately trying to save this sauce. I uh, Probably because it's gluten-free flour, it's not acting the way it would in a sauce and like thickening it. I don't even know what to do. What do you think? Like, is it worth even trying to save this? I don't want to waste all these other ingredients. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna stay the course. I might have screwed this up. Oh, it's fucking hot. It's hot. I really like it. I think once it thickens down, it's really good. It's nice. Do you want to burn your face? No. You're good? You're just going to trust me? I could throw more heat in there too. I asked for cayenne pepper and I couldn't find any, so I just use double the amount for chili powder. What's the Scoville level difference between the chili pepper, chili powder, and the cayenne powder? Um, pepper? Depend on what kind of chili powder you have. Different. The no-name shit kind that we buy. Hit me up, heat nerds. Let me know what the Scovillians are. All right, so we're gonna let this thicken up and then we're gonna add the broccoli and pasta. And then the tofu crusted things are almost ready too. It's bad. You don't like it? No. Are you kidding? No. Like you don't like it at all? Uh-uh. <laughs> you don't like the pasta or the tofu? Uh-uh. Mm. But you're still eating it. It's horrible. Do you, you're being mean now. Do you actually, I'm so confused. I don't know how she feels and it's bothering me. And if you, if you think something's horrible, you demand I make french fries. I want 
French fries. So uh, I'm making French fries. And then you stop eating. You would not have eaten this many bites. So you like it then? No. You're being, okay, mommy? Yeah, I'm good. This is meant to be like a tofu Parmesan thing. I just feel like we have meals that are similar that I like better. Yeah. To be fair, I, I screwed up the crusting on here. It's, it's really good. I like the tofu, but I agree with mom. Other meals are better. We have, uh, we have other meals that are better than this. Or the pasta sauce. It's pretty good. Mid, mid tier. Consistency is good. Dad, dad, look. Dad. Dad, it's mid. You love it. You're the only one that loves it so far. I don't love it. I don't like it. This is fine. I'll eat it, but I wouldn't make this again. Mm -hmm. Here's a hot tip for trying to figure out how much pasta you actually need to eat to sustain your body. Use a sauce that you don't love. My family never leaves this much pasta behind on a dish. We usually eat the whole damn box. So this just tells you how much they needed for their body to tell them to stop giving them food just for sustenance. That's an alarming amount that we left over. It's like half. We're eating too much pasta is basically what I'm saying. So it's just me and the boy tonight. So I'm gonna make something that I probably typically wouldn't make if my wife and my daughter were here, which is loaded burritos using Beyond Burger meat type stuff. Basically all this is is just putting a bunch of stuff together. I guess that's every recipe, but it doesn't feel like a real recipe. So we're basically gonna be grinding, grinding. We're gonna be like browning some Beyond Beef with some taco spice seasoning. So I'll put the ratio for the seasoning here. I add some peppers to it and some onions just to give it a bit more zip. Other than that, it's just gonna be adding some beans, some lettuce, and some other burrito fixings to it. The recipe calls for rice. I don't understand the idea behind putting like rice inside of a giant taco wrap. It's like putting a giant carb on a carb, on a carb. And I realize there's carbs in all food, but it just feels like a really dominant carb source inside of a carb source. It's like having a bread sandwich. Carbs, carbs, carbs. Well, you're gonna have carbs, don't worry. There's carbs in the beans though. There's already beans and I'd rather just have those extra carbs from that. Later. So I screwed up and I forgot to turn the Instant Pot on to cook the beans. So I think I have a backup. There's a store that will let me walk in with Rufus the Wonder Dog and I need to take him on a walk before dinner anyway. So I think I'll still be able to get black beans. So going to the store was totally worth it. I didn't just get beans, I got refried beans. So I'm gonna take these burritos up to the next level. I mean, it kind of looks like dog food. I'm putting dog food on my... See what we think of this. I've never actually made um, a burrito using Beyond Meat. So I'm excited to try that. I wouldn't call this like a whole food, plant-based, healthy meal. We'll call it plant-based comfort food. I love that. Tastes, you would. Tastes meaty. Tastes meaty. I even got refried beans in there. Really? Yeah. Nice. Mine's soggy because I just overstuffed it. One of these ends is going to explode. Yeah, that's phenomenal. I mean, it's nothing special. You don't need a recipe book to make this. Cook some Beyond Meat with some taco spices, throw it in a burrito with whatever you like in burritos. It's weird that it's in this cookbook. I can see the taco seasoning and stuff, but I mean, this is just kind of common sense. Make a burrito. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's not for you. Let me know in the comments below if I'm being an asshole. And this isn't common sense. You are. I, I am? He says yeah. I am. So tonight for dinner, I'm gonna make red coconut curry noodles. And I'm also gonna make a version of this coconut panko tofu. Although I'm not gonna use panko because my wife's gluten free. So I'm probably just gonna make like a cereal bread crumbing. Okay, so because I'm not using the pancro, pancro, panko. I didn't wanted to make something fun for our breading, so I just blended up some rice checks with, uh, what did I do? I put a little bit of coriander and curry powder and just a sprinkle of salt in there to kind of make its own little mix. 
curry powder is the wrong flavor. Curry powder is the wrong flavor? Yeah, it's Indian. There's curry in Indian food. This is not Indian food. You still use curry powder. It was different curry. Red and green curry, not yellow curry. You're so silly. This is gonna be a fusion dish tonight. <laughs> Willie's gonna make some delicious bok choy that uh, if you wanna see how to make that, we got that from the Veganomicon book. So when we did that recipe review, I will link to down below because that's a delicious recipe that has become a favorite in this house, right? Yeah. We've made it many times. So check out that What I Eat in a Week video after you watch this one, of course. So that yogurt's really thick and it really soaks up that breading that I made. Yogurt. Not yogurt, coconut milk, thank you. Nice. Coconut milk. Right. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top as opposed to coating it in because I think I'm gonna eat up a lot of breading and I don't want to. Here's my biggest complaint with pretty much every single cookbook. And I'm sure if I ever wrote a cookbook, I'd make this problem too. It's the estimated time. It's never right, ever. Because these people cut vegetables at different rates and they know how to do shit. They're not going back to the book and reading every five fucking seconds. So whatever estimate time someone puts in, I'd at least increase it by half, if not more, just to be generous, because that's like almost like a, a, a speed run for them. That's a distinct difference between the first batch of the breading I did and the second. Oh lordy, let's see how this turns out. Not hot at all. Oh my god. This is mine. We need to save some for dinner. Mm -mm. Feed me. He won't like it. <laughs> Give me some of those noodles. Oh. Yeah, tofu tastes like pancakes. I agree. It tastes like pancakes. Is that a good thing? Yeah. That might have been one of my favorite meals I've made in reviewing these cookbooks. Hey, we're at the farm. So tonight for dinner, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make this roasted garlic potato. And then on the side, I'm gonna take this thing from a different recipe that's um, steamed bao buns with crispy sesame tofu, but I'm not gonna do the buns. I'm just gonna do the tofu. Um, although I'm not, for both of these recipes, going to use the oil. Oh, I might use the sesame oil if I have some here. Maybe. I just don't want to, uh, yeah, a quarter cup of oil. I don't wanna cook it in oil. I'm gonna bake it instead of uh, frying it, so yeah. I didn't bring like a tripod-y kind of thing or anything, so my shooting of this section might be a little wonky. Apologies in advance. I forgot to shoot it, but I minced up some garlic and tossed it into the potatoes and then put it back in for three minutes at the end. Thanks for making this delicious dinner. How, how do you know it's delicious? Because I already tasted it. Ooh. How's the tofu? The tofu's good? Tofu's good. It's a little, probably could reduce the tamari. It's a little salty. Hello, people. So today we're going to be trying this weird meal. Chewy? Do you like it? 
Mm. No. I have feedback about the potatoes. I think the garlic would be better if you like somehow cooked it first because it's kind of got the still like the raw Eat pungent. It. The mm. pungentness. That tofu would be good on like a bed of rice too. Yeah, the garlic is definitely on the pungent side, but man, that's delicious. It's just packed with flavor. It's pretty salty. Too salty? Yeah, mommy and daddy said the same thing. And you slathered ketchup on the potatoes as well. I'm so glad I put all that time and effort into flavoring those potatoes when they just covered them in ketchup. They taste better when they're with ketchup. Thanks, Danny. They that doesn't hurt my heart at all. No, I think the potatoes are perfect without the ketchup, but. Aw, oh, thanks, wanted... Dale. You get bonus points. Oh, do I? Was the tofu too spicy for you too, or too salty? Too salty, but the potatoes were great. Thanks for joining me and my family as we dive through the six vegan sisters everyday cooking. If you like this video, hit that like button and let us know in the comments below which of these recipes was most appealing to you and you think you might make yourself. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And YouTube really thinks you'll like this video. So make YouTube happy. Make the algorithm happy and click on it.